Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining this session on computing at school and what, how, what we offer for teaching and leading computing. I am the Computing at School National Community Manager, and together with my team, I'm very excited that you've joined us on this Friday afternoon. We're going to take you through some of the offerings for primary teachers, both in teaching and leading computing. And I will say there's also a full offering for secondary teachers on the Computing at School website, but this session is completely focused on primary resources. And during the session, we're also going to have an interactive session with, where you will require pen and paper. So please be primed and ready for that, uh, quite a few interactive activities. So who are computing at school? Um, well, I'm going to take you through that. I'm also going to take you through opportunities to gain certification. I will take you through our Active Minds and Active Bodies program, and also you will find out about all of the offerings from the Barefoot Computing program. Okay, so computing at school is, think of computing at school as a computing teacher network, which promotes and supports the teaching of computing and computer science in schools across the UK. Computing at school is part of BCS, the Charter Institute for IT. And our mission statement is every child in every school has the right to a world-class leading computing education. And on the screen are some of the offers that CAS offers. Primarily, we are about teacher face-to-face -face activity, resources by teachers for teachers. And our meetings are called community meetings. So I'll take you through a bit more about that shortly. So a CAS community meeting, pre-COVID, these meetings were face-to-face. -face. Now, since the onset of COVID, these meetings are all online. So geography is no barrier to attending a CAS community meeting. So a community of practice is essentially where a group of people come together with a common interest. And in our case, the interest is computing. So CAS community of practice meetings take place approximately for each community three times per academic year. So with this common theme and purpose, local teachers will get together and share information on resources, what's new in computing education. They will test resources with each other and just generally discuss what is going on and how they can improve their own practices and ultimately impact upon the lives of their students. Okay, so as I've mentioned, the local meetings is where we network. There's also bite-sized CPD, and by that I mean about 20 minutes. So in a two-hour meeting, you'll get lots of bite-sized CPD and lots of opportunities to speak with each other. There's also the opportunity for mentoring and support from other teachers locally and also from other subject matter experts. And very, very importantly, it's about the sharing of resources. That is key to helping us to develop our practice, to see how other teachers have implemented different parts of curriculums and the impact it's having on students. Okay, so I'll take you through some of the events that we have at CAS. I've already mentioned the community meetings, and those are all the way from EYFS all the way through to Key Stage 5. We also have other types of events which take place, such as our Festival of Computing, which is a collaboration with universities, and we've got one of those coming up quite soon. We've also got virtual showcases, which replace our in-person face-to-face conferences. And we've also got webinar series which take place across the year. And one of those webinar series is the CAS Inspire program. And some of the examples of the CAS Inspire program are bite-sized CPD around remote education, resources, and careers inspiration. Okay, so we also supply and give a service to the National Center for Computing Education, also known as the NCCE. The NCC is a consortium of the organizations shown on screen, which are the Raspberry Pi Foundation, STEM Learning, BCS, the Charter Institute for IT, of which Computing at School is part of BCS. And together, these organizations are the National Center for Computing Education. Through the NCC, you are able to gain certification. And on screen, there are some of the courses, the leadership courses I've highlighted here, which NCC offers. I should also say that many of the courses through the NCC are free. 
So please do go to the NCC website, which is on screen, teachcomputing.org, and have a look at the courses. Okay, I will also now share with you one of the programs that we're running from CAS, which is the Active Minds and Active Bodies program. So this was developed last year in response to the pandemic and it's designed to support parents at home with home learning. And also some teachers have been using these resources within classroom teaching. So these, you'll notice that some of the staff um, computing at schools, such as myself, are featured in the videos. And the whole purpose of this is to show how computing can be taught and learned at home without the need to go onto a computer through everyday activities. So there's a lot of camouflage learning to introduce computing concepts and skills. So it, for example, we've got music, sport, cooking videos. I feature in a cooking video, there's gardening, recycling, and much more. And these are just everyday activities that are taking place at home, embedding computational thinking skills. There is also a worksheet to go along, as you can see shown on the right hand side of your screen, to support in teaching. So the active minds and active bodies is one of the resources we've got developed by the Computing at School team, in addition to all of the teacher resources, resources by teachers for teachers, which you can find on the CAS website. Now, I will in a minute be handing over to my colleague, John Chippendall, who will take you through the Barefoot Computing Programme. And please do have a pen and paper ready for lots of interactive activities. And before I hand over to John, I will mention that everything a computing at school offers is free. Please do join CAS and the computing at school website is on screen. So I will hand over to John. OK, thank you, Beverly. Um, and uh, I'm excited now to talk to you about barefoot computing and all the resources that we can provide you to support uh, computing in primary schools. As Beverly said, my name's uh, John Chippendall, also known as Dr. Chips, and I'm one of the Barefoot authors and one of the CAS outreach uh, managers as well. So um, please do have your pens and paper ready as we're going to do uh, a couple of quick samples of the Barefoot activities. First thing I want to say is that everything I'm going to show you is free. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Barefoot and then how you can access the resources. So what is Barefoot Computing? Well, it was initially established by the Department for Education um, as a national project to help primary teachers with the English computing curriculum when there was the change from ICT to computing. Um, and its original focus was mainly on, well, solely initially on the computer science parts of the new computing curriculum. Um, but we've since grown that as I'll uh, share in a, in a second. Um, and it has now been uh, endorsed by Education Scotland, Welsh Government, Department for Education in Northern Ireland. So it's helping to support teachers delivering those curriculum as well. It's Barefoot is made up of two main parts, resources and workshops. The workshops are free as well. And at the end of uh, the session, I will share with you um, how to sign up and how to request a workshop if you would like one in your school. Um, so let's talk a little bit about where it sits in the curriculum and then I'm going to hand over to you uh, and ask you all a question via a poll. Um, but just before I do, um, just to say in the English curriculum, we divide our uh, computing up into three strands in primary schools, the information technology, digital literacy and computer science. And embracing all of that, we have computational thinking. And as I said, initially, Barefoot computing was focused on the computer science element of um, the program of study, so programming and computer networks. And um, But we've since now started to uh, create resources which cover information technology, the effective and efficient use of technology, and also digital literacy as well. But the majority of our resources still focus on the computer science element of computing. Right, okay, so we've got a poll. Uh, now. Um, and I think hopefully we should get the poll up. Right. Yes. What is computational thinking? Please, can you let me know what you think the definition, the correct definition here 
is of computational thinking. Is it thinking like a computer, letting a computer do all the thinking, solving problems effectively with or without a computer, or thinking in a coding language? So please do submit. And I am going to have a look at what we've got coming in. Right, okay. Um, so lots of responses. Thank you very much. I'm going to give it another few seconds to get those in. Uh, at the moment, uh, way out in the lead is C, solving problems effectively with or without a computer. With a uh, close second is thinking like a computer, uh, then thinking in a coding language. And no one at the moment voting for letting a computer do all the thinking. Uh, and I'm now going to close that poll and share that you are obviously a very well-informed audience because the correct answer here was indeed thinking like a uh, computer. Sorry, apologies. Uh, solving problems effectively with or without a computer. Um, it's not thinking like a computer because computers can't think. And that's why we've actually put this in here as it's a bit of a misconception sometimes around what computational thinking is. Now, we're going to do an activity to um, illustrate how we can teach computational thinking um, without the need for any technology, unplugged. Uh, so for this, you will need a whiteboard uh, or a piece of paper and a pen. And uh, I'm going to ask you if you're joining um, wherever you're accessing this from, you can tweet us the results of uh, this activity. Um, we've got a uh, barefoot computing and computation uh, com at school Twitter handles in the top right there. So please, as you're following along, send us pictures of this activity because we're going to do a crazy character activity. So I'm going to say the steps in an algorithm to draw a crazy character. I want you to follow along. Uh, and uh, Neil, Beverly, and Wendy are going to be following along as well. Yeah, they've got their pen and paper ready, and we're going to look at what we get at the end. Okay, so here we go. Five steps to this. Step one, draw an oval body. An oval body, please. Step two, I'd like to add one eye. Step three, I'd like you to add three feet. Step four, I'd like you to add uh, four wings. And step five, I would like you to add a tail. Now, just as Neil, Wendy and Beverly are finishing theirs off, I'll also give everyone uh, a, that's tuned in a chance to, to finish theirs and take a photo. And please do tweet us with that. We've got the um, Twitter handles on there, as I said before. And now I'm going to do a countdown and I'm going to ask, let me just check that I can see you there, um, for... Uh, Wendy, Neil and, and Beverly to hold up their crazy characters on three, two, one. Hold them up to the camera, please. Right. <laughs> Fantastic. Love them. Right. Now, are they all uh, exactly the same? In fact, people that are watching, you can pop this your responses in the chat here. Um, are they? Are it, Yeah. Thank you for keep holding them up. Are they exactly the same? Uh, I had an idea in my head for this crazy character that I wanted them to draw. Um, and they've all followed exactly the same algorithm. But are they all exactly the same? Neil, what do you think? If you wouldn't mind um, jumping onto the microphone and telling me what you think, you can see the other two. Um, yeah, well, obviously, I think mine's the best, uh, but they're certainly not the same. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's going on um, uh, with some of these. Yeah, they're certainly not the same. Thank you. Um, and I wonder why that might be that they're not the same, even though you've all followed the same algorithm. Um, Wendy, any ideas why they might not be the, the same, even though you've all followed the same instructions from me? 
Um, I think it's because um, we, I was certainly wasn't sure where to put the eye, for example. So I put mine on the on the top of a, a kind of a neck sticking out there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they weren't specific enough. Excellent. Yeah, thank you. And actually, that's I'm just having a look at the uh, chat that we've got coming in from the responses from everyone tuning in. Um, and uh, sorry, I missed James and Michael. You were spot on there. Nope, they're not the same. Why? Laurie's saying because we all interpret that information differently. Not, and Wendy's saying not precise uh, language. Exactly that. Now, this is a fairly typical barefoot, unplugged activity to teach about computational thinking. Here we're teaching about algorithms, how algorithms need to be a precise sequence of instructions. And in our lesson, uh, that was just a short taster, but you get all of the resources that you need to deliver a, a full lesson on this, where pupils like the one in the picture here, write their own crazy character um, algorithm. They go around to different uh, other pupils in the class who get them to follow through the steps and draw the crazy character in the bottom. They cover it with a post-it note each time and then they do a big reveal and they're hoping that if their crazy character algorithm was precise enough, all of the drawings should be the same. So that's that's a first quick uh, taster of one of the barefoot uh, resources. Um, and our resources are all fit, are all fit around this model of computational thinking um, that we have with six different concepts and five different approaches. And we explore how things like algorithms, where are they already in the primary classroom? So we've got examples here of what algorithms might look like. Maths is a subject built upon algorithms. We have rules for how we multiply by 10 or divide or do bus stop multi uh, division, etc. So we can make links with people's existing understanding and knowledge from other subjects to exemplify what this computational thinking looks like. And very shortly, I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Wendy, who is going to look at a few more of her our resources, this time looking at abstraction, which is all about focusing on the important information and getting rid of unnecessary detail, just like the London tube map does where it shows you uh, how all of the different routes are connected, but it doesn't show you the exact um, winding routes of all the tracks. So I'm gonna hand over now to Wendy. I'm also one of the other outreach managers covering London and the East of England. And um, we're going to have a go. Let me move the slides on. We're going to have a go at this activity now. Um, it's one of the BEF activities. And as the title suggests, it involves drawing at speed. So you'll need to get your pen and paper ready again if you'd like to join in with this activity. Um, this activity is a fun way of introducing the computational thinking concept of abstraction to children. And abstraction, as it says on the slide, is identifying what is the most important and leaving out the details that are unnecessary. Um, where cross-curricular links can be made, it's important to do this as explaining where abstraction is used in other areas of the curriculum, like maths and English, helps children retain the new vocabulary and gain a deeper understanding of what these terms mean. So if you'd like to take part in this activity, um, what I would like you to do is I'm going to give you 15 seconds to draw an animal. Um, I'd like you to choose an animal that isn't currently displayed on the screen. Um, and just to point out that this activity can also be done with Play-Doh. And if you're watching, uh, we'd love you to join in. Um, as before with John's activity, please tweet us uh, your pictures of your animals. And don't forget to include the handles um, at barefootcomp and at Comp at School, which are in the top right hand side of this slide. Okay, Beverly, John, and Neil, are you ready? Okay. On your marks, get set, go.
Okay, stop drawing. <laughs> Can you hold up your animals? And we will try to guess what they are. Okay, feel free to unmute if you want to have a go at guessing. I think um, one of them might be more obvious than the other. <laughs> I think we can see that um, John's is clearly a snail. Would, it, would it, any of you like to guess, have a guess at what Beverly's is? I think, is it a, is it a fish? Yeah, I think it's yes. a fish. And we've got people guessing as well there, I think. Yes, it's a fish, fish, definitely a fish, yes. Yeah, thank you, Wendy, for guessing my snail. Um, Neil, uh, Wendy says, is yours a pig? Yes, thanks, oh, Wendy. Yes. I'm, glad, I'm glad someone's um, on the same wavelength as me. Yeah, it's like, brilliant. Thank you. Brilliant. It's really good to see people um, getting involved. Thank you. So um, just want to ask you, um, Neil and Beverly and John, um, how did you go about deciding uh, which animal you were going to draw in that activity and what to include? Um, Neil? Um, I thought what are the features that perhaps a, a pig has that the other animals don't? And I went for curly wiggly tail and snout, mm. and um, I did a pretty poor job of, of doing it, I think. <laughs> but really, really focusing on, on those important bits. Mm. Yeah, so really using that skill of abstraction, really. Um, we're going to repeat it. This time, I'm going to give people five seconds. So this really is speed drawing. You have to think very quickly, um, and you can start now. Okay, stop drawing. <laughs> Hold up your picture. <laughs> okay, answers in the chat. If anyone would like to have a go, this might be a little bit more difficult because they obviously only had a very short amount of time. Um, you can imagine how um, excited children get about um, this activity uh, if you do it in the classroom, especially when you decrease the, the number of seconds. And um, I would like to say, Beverly and John, you copied each other, but clearly you're not actually <laughs> in the same room <laughs> so it's just a complete chance that you've uh, both drawn what looks like birds oh some people have said lisa said seagull and whale <laughs> great minds wendy great minds yes great <laughs> minds think alike that's right um most people have put fish or bird so yep. using the generic term brilliant Okay, so this activity is just one of the many fantastic activities on the Barefoot website. And on the Barefoot website, there's also an at home section, which is particularly relevant at the moment. So I'm going to give you a quick tour of this now. So if you log into Barefoot, um, you can see at the top uh, where the pink arrow is showing you um, that this is the at home section of the website. So this is where to find it. And I'm just going to talk through um, some of the different parts of this site that you can see at the bottom, the Barefoot Live, the Learning Together Activities and the Mini Missions, which are the green tabs along the bottom. And then I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Neil, who's going to talk in about the interactive learning games and do a demonstration. Um, so let's have a look at um, the Barefoot Live section first of all. So if you click on that link, if you're on the website, um, you'll find this information about the live sessions that Barefoot have been holding, um, details of the ones that have already taken place. And as you can see from this list, the last one is coming up next week on Tuesday, the 2nd of March at 1.30 p.m. These are live 30-minute sessions with two of our Barefoot teachers. One of these is John, who is on this session this afternoon. And you can watch the modeling computing activities on topics like unplugged computing, which means computing without devices, coding, and online safety. And children can join in uh, from school or from home. And don't worry if you've missed the ones that have already taken place, as these can all be viewed on the Barefoot YouTube channel. And as you can see, all the direct links are included on this page. Uh, the next section I'd like to talk through is the Learning Together activities. And these are screen-free activities. 
and they come complete with all you need to get started. As you can see from the slide, each activity explains which age group it can be used with um, and the computing concepts being covered and a summary of what's involved. And then the final session that I section, sorry, that I would like to talk to you about is uh, the mini missions. And uh, mini missions are, have details of activities which help children understand the six computational thinking concepts. These activities can be done in the classroom or perhaps as a follow up fun activity at home. You can view them on the screen or you can download a printable version and this is what they look like. Uh, they're clearly laid out with the activity at the top and the learning underneath. And uh, before I hand over to Neil, we're gonna have a go at another abstraction activity that's mentioned um, here. And this one has been taken from Mini Missions and it's called Five Word Film Game. So please do um, get involved and please put your answers into the chat as before. Um, this is a simple activity which does exactly what it says on the tin, uh, five word film game. So this is how it works. I'm gonna read out five words, one at a time, and I want you to see if you can identify the film that I am describing. So we're gonna get started. Film number one. Uh, the first clue is orphanage. Anybody think they know yet? <laughs> Second clue is moon. The third clue is, oh, somebody says Annie and Oliver. Good guesses. Um, I tried this activity with my daughter earlier and she said Annie. Not, they're incorrect, keep thinking. Next clue might give it away. It's a very famous film. Um, shrink Ray. It's not E.T. The next clue is Gru. And my son's guessed it at this point. <laughs> and final clue, if you haven't got it yet, is, this is gonna give it away, Minions. Yes, well done, Daniel, Ludovic, Sammy Joe, and Neil, who and Ed, who have all um, typed in, and Jane, Despicable Me. Well done. Okay, let's see if you can identify it a bit quicker this time. So, this is a really, really famous film, children's film. First clue is Village. Second clue is Castle. Third clue is Queen. <laughs> Sue says she's not seen it. <laughs> um, you will know this movie. Um, fourth clue is Snowman. And the final clue, we've got Robin Hood, Beauty and the Beast, Snow White. Oh, getting closer. Yes. Final clue, which is definitely going to confirm whether you've got the answer right or not, is Elsa. <laughs> Lots of people typing Frozen into the chat box. Uh, well done. Final film, film number three. I feel like I could play this all day. <laughs> film number three. This is actually my favorite movie of all time. Um, so an adult film. Hopefully you've seen it. Um, first clue is Cottage. Second clue is Mansion. Third clue is house swap. <laughs> Sue's saying she's seen Frozen. <laughs> um, the fourth word or phrase is romantic comedy. Well done, Caroline. You've guessed it already. And Laurie. <laughs> and just to confirm, the fifth clue is Cameron Diaz. And it is, of course, the famous romantic comedy, The Holiday. Um, so well done. And thank you to all the people um, who got involved uh, with that activity. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did.
Okay, I'm going to move on with the slides and I'm going to hand over to Neil now, my colleague Neil, who is going to talk through um, the interactive games section of this part of the website. Thanks, Neil. No worries. Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming to the session. I'm Neil Rickers. I'm a senior lecturer in computing education at the University of Hertfordshire and also do a lot of work with computing at schools and, like John, have authored some of the barefoot material and been involved with a lot of their games. And that's what I'm going to show you uh, this afternoon. I'm just setting up my screen sharing, which in a minute I'm hoping that you will be able to see. So within the Barefoot Materials, we've got eight games that children can use both at home and at school. And a lot of these focus on computational thinking. And the one I'm going to show you today, that allows children to learn all about fishing. The game's called The Fisherman, and it teaches them about phishing scams, messages they might receive that mean that people try and steal their personal information. And it does this through training them up in a game-like environment. You can probably see at the top here, we've got lives and stars that uh, we can earn. And then it goes to look at how the various scams and the messages they might receive actually look in the technologies they use. So there's um, example apps on there where children might share videos and how messages pop up, perhaps trying to get them to download things uh, that actually might not be from a trusted source, for example. So what you can see on the minute is the first proper bit of the training game. Children will have already entered their name and been introduced to the term phishing and we now need to actually train them up on some of the features of phishing scams and along the bottom of the screen you can see some of the things that the phishing scams might actually include and these are bad grammar so perhaps the spelling and the way sentences are phrased is a bit unusual they might be forced to feel under pressure so you've got to respond to this quickly or even offered things that are too good to be true such as you want a playstation 5 if you respond in the next 30 seconds there's often design errors and also messages might come from an untrusted source one you might not be familiar with so i'm going to start this bit of a game and john and wendy are going to be the people that are trying to identify what the features are in each of these phishing messages and um, i'm going to ask john to to go first with these are you ready john for your first message i'm ready okay good stuff i will start the game see if you can spot the feature of this message which might identify it as a phishing scam you have have been act reply to this message with your full name and home address but wrong we will Right, okay, I think this one is bad grammar from reading that through. I'll go for bad grammar, please. Okay, let's go for it. Yes, you got a tick and 10 points awarded there. Wendy, uh, you're up for this next one. It, it looks like stuff maybe isn't quite in the right place. Mm, I think it has to be a design error then. All right, let's go for that one. Yes, you're right, you're doing well, team, you're doing well. Uh, next one, John this weird web address yeah i think that's probably an untrusted source i mean it, it, it's trying to look like facebook but it's actually just face bk so untrusted source for me yeah it doesn't look great does it okay yes you're doing well you're doing well oh th this one looks a bit a bit urgent it may feel um under pressure perhaps wendy <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> it's been uncomfortable just just reading the first line <laughs> <laughs> okay right and, um, john you've got a ps5 Oh, again, fantastic. But <laughs> I, I think that's probably too good to be true because I can't remember entering it, the competition. No, I thought that competition would be your bag. Let's have a look. Yeah, you, you're doing well here. You're doing well. Um, Wendy, this one, confirm your email address and password. Um, untrusted source I'm going to go with. Yeah, why do you reckon? Why, why, why have you gone for that? Uh, well, it has a strange URL. Trust oh, yeah, it's weird. It doesn't sound very authentic. <laughs> Not <laughs> I've heard sure. it either. <laughs> it's a fishing okay. game. 
Uh, John, you've won another PS5. Another PS5. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, probably too good to be true. Okay. And um, I'm sure you uh, yeah, started to... Yeah, to lots of spelling there. mistakes on there. So okay so um well done uh you two i, I think you uh, you got through it and if you hadn't completed uh, that successfully the bits that you will uh, you may have got wrong you actually revisit those and help you focus on some of the features that weren't correct so i'm just going to show you one other little bit of the fisherman that helps explain and and show how the messages might appear on the technology that children actually use. So we're based in an underwater village called Kelpie Deeps, and I'm gonna go for uh, this fish. And what's really nice with the fisherman is that when we developed it, we we're really keen for it to be access as accessible as possible. So all of this text, if you want, is actually read out to you as well. So your perhaps uh, reading ability doesn't become a barrier to you finding out about uh, fishing and actually how you might give away all your personal information. So fish is telling us about knickknack, sounds like a little bit like TikTok, I think, and fish really wants you to be one of their followers. And oh, I can, yeah, I can follow the fish. Uh, always loves a, a new follower, as you might expect. And but they're they're warning us there might be people even on Knickknack that are trying to compromise our account. Oh look, there's there's a new version. I've got a, a message in here. Hmm. And maybe something is starting to look not quite right here. And that's where I'm actually going to end. Uh, this bit and we can go on to look at perhaps how the program actually might try and maybe flag up to you that you have clicked on a link that's not correct or maybe even you've actually given away a bit of personal information and how you might manage that as well. So thanks, uh, John Wendy, for playing along. I'm now going to pass over to uh, John again, and he's going to tell you a little bit about some of the program activities within Defla. Super. Thanks, Neil. Um, so when I spoke to you before, I was talking to everyone about all of the um, unplugged computational thinking focused activities that Barefoot has to offer. But I also just want to share that we do cover uh, plugged resources, the idea of actually then applying that computational thinking in the context of programming. Um, so just to talk very briefly about our programming activities, these are all cross curricular. So they link into other subjects. So it might be creating patterns by learning about repetition in programming to link to art or programming a Viking raid to link to um, um, history. And when we um, present our programming lessons, we have four stages to the, the process of programming. So we have a task that we set, first of all. So in this example, taken from one of our introductory um, B-Bot programming uh, lessons, the, the task is to get the, the B-Bot to trace out the different digits from one to nine. And then we always make sure that we have a, a design stage because this is the opportunity for pupils to really use their computational thinking skills and come up with an algorithm um, for the uh, for the number that they're trying to draw out before they then actually go and grab their B-Bot. And I've got a B-Bot here. Um, if people haven't seen B-Bots before, in fact, I think we've got a show of B-Bots potentially from, uh, from everyone. I think we've got them if you've got them there. Uh, um, and we've got the, the the fake bot there as well, um, which uh, Beverly is holding up. Neil, look, look at that, uh, a B bot within reach, yeah. Um, and uh, then, so we always encourage, we do this design stage first, then we code it and then we run our program. Now that's really important because if we don't have that design stage, we're not practicing those important computational thinking skills. And if we make an error um, in our, program we've got no reference our algorithm we don't know potentially what we've actually coded um, into our device so we're going to do another quick activity now um, and Neil Beverly and Wendy are going to uh, participate as well um, so let's have a go at 
um, right in the algorithm to draw the digit six. And you can follow, have a go, follow along, pop it into the chat, your algorithm. And algorithms are written for humans. So, so they can be whatever form you want. You might write into the chat, your algorithm is, you know, forward, forward, left, forward, forward. Or you might just do F, F, L. It's up to you. Um, and just anybody that's not familiar with the B-Box, just to let you know, they move the commands on here is that they move forward or backwards or rotate on the spot left 90 degrees or right 90 degrees. So if anyone can come up with now, you do need to think about in here as well where your B-Box is going to start. So if you're popping into the chat, then um uh, maybe consider thinking about that as well. Although actually, wherever your B-Bot starts, you will still get a number six. If it's correct, it might just be an upside down number six. So if you're really trying to push yourself to get a number six in the correct orientation, then you need to think about where it's going to start. So I'm going to I'm going to give uh, the team here a, a few more seconds and then I'm going to see if anyone uh, if we don't have any. Uh, algorithms coming through quite yet, whether I can ask um, either Beverly, Wendy or Neil to share their algorithm. Uh, I'm just trying to assess who's looking most confident about their algorithm. I think it's Neil. He's already done. He's holding it up. Yeah. Thumbs up. Um, OK, Neil, would you mind just coming on the microphone for me then? Uh, and we're going to uh, talk about your your algorithm. Are you there? You are. Yeah. So I I started mine sort of in the middle and okay I went... sorry. can i can i sorry to interrupt can i pause you there because i've actually got a b-bot simulator ready to go here um oh. so if i go to screen share and then actually switch to my b-bot simulator um can you see that okay it's just chugging away i think it'll be with us in a okay. couple of seconds john let me know when you can see the bbot simulator this there is we a go. i've got it yeah. so is that it is it gonna if we start it there and we'll see whether or not how your six comes out and how it's orientated is that okay perfect if you can maybe move it left a little bit that'd be lovely. like that there we go that looks okay good. right go for it share your algorithm with me then please neil and we'll we'll implement that as code okay right right forwards forwards right Right. Forwards. Forward, right. Yep. Forwards. Right. Forwards. Forwards. Right. Forwards. And I wondered even if I could maybe there was lots of repeating instructions at the start there. So I wondered if I could maybe repeat those, but I don't think the B bot allows us to do that. It doesn't. No, you're right. If we are doing this with looking at an activity like this with uh sort of into lower key stage two we could look at the use of repetition commands but should we give it a go then let's run your program to see uh, if we get a six here we go it's looking good to myself now whether i've actually um <laughs> <laughs> it's looking good yes fantastic Round of applause. Very, very good. Thank you. Let me come back to you. Where, where are you? Um, we should come back to the slides as well. And and now I've come back. Um, thank you also to those people that have popped um, the their algorithms. These all look good. Um, uh, and uh, Neil, uh, Fiona is saying, well done. Um, and so, yeah, so thank you to everyone that's popped in their algorithms in there as well and has followed along. So um, that's an example there of one of the programming activities that we've got. We have lots. And as I said, they all link to areas of the curriculum. So I mentioned the Viking animation, which you can see there. We've got fossil animations. We've got uh, geography based world map logic. Now, to uh, access all of these fantastic resources or and or to book a uh, barefoot workshop this is the address that you need to go for go to barefootcomputing.org um, register your details it's reg quick registration everything is free as i said before um, and 
we hope that you find those resources useful. And we will now like to invite any questions that anyone has about anything that you've heard uh, in the presentation or any other questions. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you everyone. So there are a few questions coming in. Um, John, I think these first two questions are for you. It's regarding registering on the barefoot computing side from abroad. So we've got a few people from abroad who are having trouble um, registering and there are issues with school postcodes and zip codes. I'll come back to John. I think John may have dropped off. Um, Neil, I've got one for you. Could you link the BeeBot Simulate in Scratch that, we, that you were using, that John was using? Sorry, I double clicked my uh, mute button. Yeah, certainly you could use the draw functions uh, within Scratch to do a, a very similar thing, perhaps have a, a sprite of a, of a bee bot or even just a, a bee or an animal. And then using the drawing tools, you could go forward a certain number of sprites and uh, and then that's turn 90 degrees. Uh, you could perhaps even use Scratch Junior um, as well uh, to sort of achieve that task. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen the drawing tools in the latest version of Scratch. They're actually in a, a sort of hidden bit now. There's a little icon in the bottom left-hand corner and uh, you then go to the drawing tool. So I think in, in the earlier versions, uh, they, the pen the tools as they were known as were, were there automatically, but you actually have to enable them separately using those little blocks in the bottom corner. Okay, thank you very much, Neil. There is another one which I think I will fail. It's how can I upskill myself as a computing teacher and as a computing lead in my school? And the best way to do that is to go to the Teach Computing website and look at the offerings from the National Centre for Computing Education, the NCCE. And there are lots of courses there for teaching and leading computing within your school. Okay, uh, there is another one coming in. This is from Wendy Jane. How, so it's from Wendy Jane, and I'm going to pose it to the panel. How many activities need to be online and how many activities can be offline? So I don't know if Wendy, you want to take that or John? Yeah, sorry, I was just on mute. Now are specifically uh, screen free and offline. Um, so I think on each activity, um, it will explain whether it's an online or offline activity. Um, so it really depends on which activity you're looking at. But certainly, um, it's always good to, um, especially when you're teaching computing, um, to if it can be taken offline to do that, to take a step back as it were, and uh, look at it from an unplugged perspective. To, to aid children's understanding of what they're doing, especially if you're doing some coding uh, with the B bots and they haven't really understood um, how to um, sequence uh, the set of instructions to actually walk it through in your classroom or home setting um, helps children understand what's going on. Okay, thank you, Wendy. There's another one coming, which I think would be for you, Wendy. This is from Daniela. How can we get a member from Barefoot to come into our school? Yeah, really good question. Thank you. Um, so if you go onto the Barefoot website, um, you can actually request um, a, a workshop. There's two different workshops um, that are available. Um, there's an introduction to Barefoot if the teachers in your school are not um, currently familiar with uh, Barefoot Computing. And then there's a second follow-up workshop. Um, at the moment, um, the workshops are taking place online. Um, but they were face to face before. So I'm sure at some point in the future, um, we will be able to get Barefoot Ambassadors back into schools running workshops. Um, but yeah, apply through the website, request a workshop. And I'm sure John can give some more up to date information, John. No, no, sorry. I was just going to say, I saw the question come through from Danielle. And I think that she was um, 
uh, saying that they're quite a small school in a rural area. So actually, at the moment, with everything that's happened, Barefoot has moved to online delivery. Um, and all of the events that Barefoot are doing are advertised through um, the CAS community as well. So if you make sure you, you're a member of CAS and, and look there, then you could get get your yourself and your teachers in your school accessing that uh, virtually. Can I just say, I'm actually running a, a couple of barefoot workshops. There's still some spaces available in March. Um, so yes, please do go to the CAS events page um, and you're very welcome to join either of those and other teachers in your school. So thank you, Wendy and John. And just to say that CAS and Barefoot are completely free to join. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got another question here. How do I find my local CAS community? Well, go to the Computing at School website and go to the Community tab and then go to CAS communities across England and you will find a section where you can put in your postcode and then you'll be able to find the local CAS community closest to you. But don't forget, geography is no barrier right now. So you can access any community because of some of the sort of benefits of going online since the pandemic. Seeing if there are any further questions. John, there was a question regarding overseas um, attendees being able to join the Barefoot website and having difficulties with the postcode and the zip code. Yeah, I'm not sure what the specific um, difficulty there is. So I might just encourage that person to ping an email to inquiries at Barefoot. But um, I would say, I was going to say, obviously, the when we're operating in a normal world, our face-to-face um, -face in school workshops are based in England, the UK. But then I thought, well, where are you actually? I quite ha happily come over where, wherever it is that you might be tuning in from the world. But no, unfortunately, the face to face stuff is just in the UK. But again, at the moment, with virtual things happening, it's an opportunity for um, perhaps a bit of a wider audience. Okay, fantastic. Um, there's another one here. Uh, let me just have a look here. It's regarding barefoot, incorporating barefoot into a scheme of work. So what advice would you give around that? Shall I pick I up? I think John, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so um, with the Barefoot Resources, you can perhaps look at how these might fit in with existing topics that you've got to make uh, good use of the cross-curricular nature of them. So you could um, build them into a scheme. If your pupils are covering things like the Vikings, then you might look to... Uh, adding them into to year five um, all our resources as well obviously they're they're lesson plans but they have very much the ethos as well of teacher cpd and we have lots of teacher guides associated with them as well so if you have uh, teachers that are less confident with computing then incorporating some of the barefoot resources into your school's curriculum can support those teachers in delivering their computing as well Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's one coming in for me um, regarding CAS events. So CAS events are also under the community tab on the CAS website, and you can have a look at all the CAS events that are available across the country. Um, I can see that Daniel has just responded and saying from abroad, from outside of the UK, you have to enter the address manually to register on the Barefoot website. So thank you very much for that. Just seeing if there's anything else currently coming in. Um, is there anything around home learning that you can share with our audience? So I think, Wendy, do you want to pick that one up or Neil? I think Neil will pick it up. Is there anything around home, home, home learning? Yeah, I know, um, Wendy mentioned some of the resources earlier. Um, we've got um, eight games currently that are on there. There's a number of mini missions which uh, can be picked up and sort of can be can be undertaken really quickly as well. And that means that uh, perhaps they they don't have to sort of be the focus um, of an entire lesson. We've got the barefoot live lessons. Uh, I think there's one of those coming up on Tuesday, and all the previous lessons uh, there to watch as well. And there's lots of activities which we call learning together activities, and they focus on various concepts related to computational thinking, and they go from age four all the way up to 
age 11 and there's things on there such as the cyber snakes resources where you can learn about staying safe online you can be doing hand jives uh, with uh, some of your older children perhaps being code breakers which is linked to some Rolf Dahl poems. So there's lots and lots of resources that either parents can use with their children or can be uh, set as activities for children to undertake away from the classroom. There's also um, the Active Minds and Bodies videos, which are on our YouTube channel, which is called CAS TV. Um, so you can access those there and accompanying um, support sheets, which are available on the Computer Lit School website under the CAS Inspire section which Beverly spoke about earlier. Those are really good cross-curricular activities that can be done at home um, and just show children how these computational thinking concepts link um, with everyday activities like cooking, um, football and drumming. So um, do check those out. Thank you very much. We seem to have one more coming in and I think, John, this will be for you. Uh, does Barefoot cover all areas of the computing curriculum? Okay, so um, it's uh, predominantly focused on the computer science element um, because that was the initial work of uh, Barefoot. Um, so programming and uh, understanding computer networks and the computational thinking which underpins that. But in more recent times, we're broadening to cover the other areas. So it doesn't cover the complete computing curriculum as yet, but we are now developing more content uh, around things like digital literacy, as Neil's demonstrated uh, today, um, and IT, digital skills, which are um, obviously really important as well, and particularly at the moment have been emphasized as being uh, such an important part of the curriculum. So we are working to cover all areas. OK, thank you very much. Um, Currently, I cannot see any further questions. So um, if there are, are any questions, we are about four minutes away from ending. But if there are any questions, please do pop them into the question window. So we'll just allow a couple of more minutes to see if there are any questions. Just mentioned the crazy characters that have been shared on Twitter. Really nice, uh, Beverly. So um, thank you to every, everybody for, for sharing those. Certainly more creative than my dubious looking pig. <laughs> I look forward to having a good look at them once this webinar is completed. Yeah, I'll put the link in the chat if you want to see. <laughs> I don't, I can't mm. get anything more coming through. Thanks, James, That's... for sharing the YouTube, our YouTube channel. That's really helpful. Thank you. Okay, so yes, the YouTube channel has just recently been relaunched. So all of the active minds and active bodies uh, vid webinars and videos are up there and is last year we did a virtual showcase everything is up there so there's a wealth of resources for teachers on the CAS YouTube channel okay, I don't think there's anything else coming through okay there is a question regarding getting our email addresses from Sophie Sophie if you email comp at school I'll get the team to put it into the chat, the Compet School email address, then that will be forwarded on to all of us. So, Wendy, if you can pop the Compet School email address into the chat, please. Yeah. And what I should also say that you'll be contacted by someone, a member of the outreach team who covers your area. So, say, for example, if you're in Plymouth or in Newcastle, you'll be contacted by one of the members that's covering your area. Okay. Okay, it's got one more. Um, I think this may be for you, John. Would you mind if we make translations of the printable resources for our students? Uh, no, if, you're, if you'd like to, we, we'd like our resources to be used by as many students that they're going to benefit. So, and if that, if you're based uh, overseas and you're going to, to translate them, then please go for it. Yeah. And please share those translations. Yeah. As yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please do. Yeah. The more the merrier. Yes. This is the whole ethos of CAS sharing resources by teachers for teachers. And that's an excellent way of benefiting the community. Okay. I think, Think. I cannot see any further questions coming in. So thank you very much for joining us. If there are any more questions, I think, Wendy, you've managed to put the email 
Yes. Press in. Lovely. Thank you very much. So please do get in touch with us at Computing at School. And we'd love to hear your stories and to see you participating in community meetings. And have a wonderful rest of the Friday evening and a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.